those fights that went very well for Even and Death. That w really was the turnaround for them. Yeah, I mean, like, if we take a minute to consider that bottom fight, for instance, right? It's just like, well, if everybody's there and everybody's thinking, hey, this is the only fight they can win that might be able to turn the momentum and you don't risk that all-in one-shot wonder because it wasn't even as coordinated as we saw the other picks into the game, right? For instance, the later stages, we saw actually really well-coordinated polybombs, and, but that was at level 20. And at the level 15, 16 fight on the bottom, it was just... You just need to not get picked, and you are going to take that keep, and you should be able to take that game. Yeah, pushing with the boss on the bottom. Well, now Even in Death has gotten their first victory in HGC. Huge congrats to them. But we're still going in the series. It's 2-1 in favor of Superstars. Superstars losing that last game. Now we'll have an opportunity. Likely they're going to choose first pick. We know that of them. Um, we might be out of Even in Death Battlegrounds that we know they like. I, sorry, I got distracted. Somebody was talking to my head and I got told <laughs> <laughs> something about even in death battlegrounds that they like. Well, we know they like small battlegrounds. Yes, so always. So Tomb, uh, Dragon, those two are gone. They've picked Sky, t Sky as well. So where do you think they would choose to go now? You're going to go to, you. there's no small maps directly left, right? So then you kind of look at, well, what do I gain? What do those maps have in common that I obviously focus on my strengths? Something weird like, Battlefield of Eternity comes to mind. I don't think that that's going to be the focus. I think that's their ban. That's their they ban. So ban then, w then where would you get that kind of macro? I actually don't know for a team as young as even in death, because again, we don't get to see it. Like I look at towers, maybe curse. Braxis. Braxis. So then what do we have here? Band was superstars went with the curse ban, which is again, man. Braxis and Dragonshire by almost every other team in North America, both are not even going to be an option, but even in death. Gets them not only in their series with superstars, but volunteers into them, both teams. One taking the Dragon, one taking the Braxis. Not what I would expect. And it makes a lot of sense now, considering the small maps, the small focus. I thought Braxis was banned, honestly. I just assumed that Dragon Char was the only outlier that made it through. I shortened myself because sometimes my legs need stressed. <laughs> that was really strange. I just, I do this actually in draft with a little, I'm looking, <laughs> I'm gilly now. This is. What are you talking about? I'm taller. I'm definitely not standing on a platform of any kind. No, definitely not. <laughs> but it, it's a, it's a, it's going to be ac accenting the strength because it is a two lane map. Um, but I feel like that's an old thought process for North America. Agreed. Uh, it used to be that you could gain advantages the same way you could gain advantages like maps on Dragonshire and like maps on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Uh, but since we decided to alter the way we played, shout out to Gale Force Esports with that one. Uh, they were at least the first to highlight that style, play style, the rotational, the forcing your upper hand in North America. It's not going to be realistic for them to gain an advantage that way. So much so that now I wonder if that means it's a huge advantage over the superstars or not. Well, so this is the one battleground that Superstars won versus No Tomorrow. It's been one that they've been pretty comfortable on in the past. Um, even versus Gale Force Esports, they were willing to play versus them. That was sort of the beginning of the Gale Force style of Braxis Holdout, and they had Sray on Sylvanas. So that was the first inclination of the Sray roll swap. <laughs> Did not work out in the end, but it was a cool idea to try to counter it. Did he do the sweet breeze? No, he didn't do the That's, arrow. That is. Unique to Breeze. It was the world's greatest Sylvanas <laughs> impression. Never forget. He was doing that, and people were just like, what is what he, is he doing? doing? Yeah. Everybody was like, is uh, Breeze going to die? Man. It's, play it's a very high air guitar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the world's <laughs> weirdest violin. Tassadar was removed here for superstars. Even in death, not one to deal with Hosi's Genji. Especially Banning on Praxis. He is so frustrating. The way he can backdoor. Ooh. Malthiel first pick. So if even in death just immediately commits to high rotations with solid solo laners, like a Dahaka, a new Barak would be okay, but then you can't go into the Murden, keep in mind, which has been a core to countering the strategy. But I think it's almost inevitable that we see Superstars pick Gul'dan plus another I'm focusing on laning hero. And if e even in Dutch just goes, we're not going to care and play again like we've seen a lot in North America, which the Zagara pick is the exact opposite of what I was talking about. <laughs> you just silenced yourself? It's uh, maybe not as bad as I'm making it out to be. It's just that you want that pre-10. I don't want it post-10, and the Zagara is waiting to essentially get str struggle in the early aspects of it. It does decentivize any Dahaka rotation here for superstars, but... Why would even Undeath pick that Zagara so highly? 
Is there something behind that? Other than a cheese that I don't have off the top of my head for even in death? No. It's, it, it, like, it's just that they're afraid of its post-secondary ban phase that it's going to get banned out and that they think it's core to what is going to be, in my opinion, probably one of their only strategies on this map because you also have to realize to test multiple comps and multiple like maps is something that is really difficult to do and they'd be like, we're best with our Zagara when it's on Braxis and we aren't going to risk that secondary ban phase. Ariel Lunara for Superstars. Lunara over Vala, over Gul'dan, but still a tried and true battery for Ariel. Oh, oh man, please ban Li Ming even in death. No, never. Oh man. Yeah, do it. I don't know, it's weird. Uh, so into a double poison, a reset is insane. Like, it's actually just, I feel dirty watching it, let alone if I was the guy picking it and playing it. But you also have no way to get three heavy influential uh, synergistic double supporting with the Ariel, right? Like, because you've committed into that. So I, I, I am torn on if I feel like it's that impactful, but it's something that I want them to at least consider, especially with the Anubarak having the Cocoon. They go with the Zarya ban instead. Man, I am so amazed that, again, Uther has made it so far in this draft. Granted, it is Braxis. It is the one battleground we see some changes. Not wanting Chromie though against Ariel. So, Superstars obviously knows the type of composition that Gale Force Esports has run in the past with the Zagara, having Chromie as a way of stopping any sort of hard push from the four main instead. Plus, banning that versus Ariel because she doesn't have a cleanse is a possibility for Temporal Loop. Now, even in death, have two more picks. What are they? If it's a hidden strategy, we're going to see it here. Ooh. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really thinking this one through here. Why give up? Gilly, am I blind? Uther's Uther, not banned. I said, just said that. Yeah. Like, did you just give double support Uther Ariel Lunara yeah. over to Superstars in the last pick slot possible? Yes. Am I crazy? Hello? Am, what am I missing here? <laughs> Are they going to not pick it? How did Uther make it this deep? First question. Second question. How is he not snap locked? My brain hurts. I feel like I'm missing something big here. Even in death is committed all to macro focus onto the, the map. They're committing to the heavy 1-4, considering that. There's the Murd in backdoor cycle with the Chen. Okay. No Uther. <laughs> Instead, Pandemonium. So we got to talk about how that laning setup is going to work. Superstars now have the Murden. Now they have the Chen. Last pick. I don't know. Is it somebody who has to help Zagar on the solo lane? I, I, how has Dahaka made it through? And Uther. What is this madness? I actually don't know. I'm like, my Dread, I was sick one day. <laughs> What did I come back to? Uther Dahaka's out of the matter. I don't get it. And they all rack. They skip both of them. It's oh, neither. Oh. <laughs> I love Alarak. Into a Chen? He can. He's got multiple ways to stop his drinking. Yeah, you know, it's it's all right, but it. I. I don't know. Things got wild. It did. I'm not even totally confident if I can project an accurate amount of thought uh, towards this draft right now. Like, revisiting it here. Ariel, Malthale, Lunara, Murden, Chen. Okay. Versus Anubarak, Zagara, Gul'dan, Malfurion, and Alarak. Just needed to read it through. I'm thinking. Hold on. Uh, so, with the laning phase, you have Malthale should be essentially... Successful into most of the laning matchups that you have onto the other side of the table. You'll struggle into actually Zagara pretty heavily. You'll struggle into Alarak a little bit. Yeah, that's more of a skill matchup, Malfiel, yeah. Alarak. I, I see two, two threes. You are correct. I yeah, think you're I right. think both sides are going to go for a two three. 
You've got Alarak and Zagara. Um, although, Alarak, ideally, if he's going to be going for Extended Lightning, granted, Goku didn't do that yesterday. It's the first time I've ever seen Ruthless Momentum. But if he wants to go for those stacking talents, ideally wants to be where my friend's at so that he can be... I don't know what's happening to me right now. <laughs> Let's just go into the game and see what they do. <laughs> game What's number four, Superstars and Even in Death. We'll see you there. You <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you there. You were... All over. Oh man, I'm dying too. You were all over the place. You had a conversation, together. you had a sentence, you were doing a thing, and you're like, you know what? Screw it. I've given up on myself. Let's go on to the next thing. <laughs> that's Wha true. That happened. You know, the thing for me is number one, holy all the racket level what? one. Sustaining power? Increases the healing. He's got he's gonna be in the soul and then. That's just all about increasing survivability. Your, yeah, your healing received from Lightning Surge hitting heroes. The one thing that I want to see out of Superstars into this game specifically, and part of the reason that the Zagara, you know, in the 1 2 slot is so very risky on the side of Even in Death, is just the fact that she is not very good if you don't have any forts up. And if Superstars goes blow for blow and matches the laning phase 1 4 for 1 4 perfectly, or even 3 2 to 3 2. Superstars will struggle post-10 as long as the forts are up. And so I would really like to see Superstars just not match even in death at all. Just push. It is funny how similar these drafts are when you look at the 2-3. They both drafted for the 2-3. Both have a warrior who can try to steal away a shrine and then burrow charge or dwarf toss away, backdooring a beacon. And then you have your support ranged poison dealer Poison damage dealer between uh, Lunara and Gul'dan. Huh. Huh. Yep. It is weird. Especially because, like, that's one of those uh, dynamics that, you know, many people, or, I mean, probably don't even consider. It. Just because at the competitive level, you don't look at things as the same roles as necessarily they're broken down. It's not the how many warriors, how many. It's more of like, well, these heroes provide this to these respective lanes, so what is that going to gain for these comps? And it, I'm I'm still so hit or miss. I really like that North America's adapted a 3-2. I think having more diverse laning phases and understanding the, that rotational strength, compositional strength, is huge improvement to see that 3-2 is pushed. But it's my argument against like why the 3-2 works is the same reason as to why it should start failing. And that is because it's become too consistent and too norm to where the next variation should be able to come out and be able to take it out. It's just... I'm surprised that a lot of teams are just going like, oh, if you want to draft a 3-2, we'll draft a 3-2. I'm, I'm going, no, I'm going to draft a 1-4, and I'm going to put my 4 into your 2. I'm going to smash them, and I'm going to trade even. Like, you know what I mean? I, that is the place I would like to see a little bit more of. Um, and it's only a matter of time before I feel like it drops off. But for now, just heavy focus. Did you see that creep spread already? It's um, actually giving me a bit of nightmares. <laughs> Zagara's Zagara, when I was a competitive player, used okay, to be well, full good. creep build. And so I'm just, every time I see Zagara with a lot of creep, I just remember the days where it's like, oh, I can't move out on the map because three quarters of it's just covered by Zag because they won the early game. And that's what I'm feeling right now, a little bit so far here for Frozen X. He's keeping the pressure up. He's got the infest. He's also low on mana. But yeah, he it does have an infest, so he is looking to push the lane hard. He's got Alarak there for safety to be able to make sure that Zagara can stay safe. But in the bottom lane, Superstars are bullying their way onto the point. This forces Zagara and Alarak to try to take top. Which they do, but not before 40% is achieved by Superstars. Looking at what builds we have, a Ring of Fry Fire Fire is going to help a lot with clearing out that creep now that Chen has that at four. We have the new Moonburn for Malfurion. I don't know, did you see that at all yesterday? Yes. It's uh, in general. I feel like the only consistent talent we've seen on Malfurion actually outside of Twilight Dream. Okay. And that's about it, actually. It really is Moonfire seems to be, or Moonburn, excuse me, the new improved. Uh, seems to be the staple so far, but we've seen different fours. We do, uh, like, Europe is full Moonfire. NA has gone Treant. Uh, I did see full, that. Full Entangling Root strategy. I don't think anybody is totally uh, confident of what they want to see here. But so far, even in Death is running a bit more of a basic one. Going with Moonfire and the, or Moonburn and then into the Aloons. The Aloons for the follow-up. Uh, entangling Roots, 
possibility of having that range if battery wants to dive in. Really just anything, being able to have increased range of all of your basic abilities is very nice. That's why Loon's Grace has been meta for so long as a talent. Uh, Alarak went for Show of Force. This was buffed to do more damage if you can hit the full combo on somebody. Hitting somebody with three of Alarak's abilities uh, increases the damage taken. It does a little bit more bonus damage. So not not going for either of the two big stacking talents at one or four, which makes a lot of sense again because he's not sure how many people are going to be in this lane. Yeah, I don't mind not going into that. Hold on, nice rebuttal here. I think Battery should have waited a little bit longer for the follow-up. Into a Chen, you never want to stack your CCs. You want to wait till he goes, oh, I have to brew. Then you look to be able to get that, especially pre-7 before you get the uh, fear of a brew master balance. But the one thing on the side of all right, that you could make a counter argument into is focusing on the newer level one that I don't know the current name of. It's essentially his version of not battle momentum, but remaining hard and focused. Uh, yeah, his ruthless momentum that Goku had. Into a Chen, for instance, because Chen doesn't have necessarily that big of damage to be able to no, blow, you, like, blow it, get you down. Then you have multiple cooldowns. That was what I expected. If I'm going into Chen and I pick an all right, I'm like, okay, he's going for CDR because Chen just shouldn't be able to have damage at that fast. Granted, post four, Chen should actually be able to, I think, out damage it, to be frank. I don't know every Alarak 1v1 because he's not relevant enough competitively, and I just cannot figure out the hero. Well, in this case, it's not even a true 1v1 anyway, since you've got the 2v2. Yeah, the level seven of Malfurion, that's one. It's going to be strangling Vine still, still going for the 30% healing reduction on the opponent's side of things. Do like it a lot more into an Ariel with AoE supporting be able to remove a little bit of that, but I, I'm still not totally sold on the talent. It's a great setup by Iacona Detainment Strike, knowing that Airho was about to get there, but it's still battery. He has the supporting of Malfurion. He has his own shielding. Stormbolt hit. 100% Zerg Rush achieved by Superstars that will push in the bottom lane. Chen finally becoming a bully there. As time has gone on, and it's probably only going to be worse in tier, but... Superstars, they've got the Zerg Rush. Can they make happen with it here? It's pretty resizable there for even in death as well. Zagara sieging up there. Should be able to make a lot happen. Lutana defending as well onto the Zerg Rush. That's a really nice laning setup here for even in death. Nice, they got the pickup on the top. That was huge, I think. I was like, there's no way they don't get this forward up on top, right? And at least they managed to get that pick. Yeah, definitely getting the pick will help. Batteries of Burr charge away. Superstar still continuing up the pressure. They have Iacona. Guardians are the only Zerg left for the Siege. So even in death, looks like they're going to be able to clear this out without losing too much on that fort. Both sides saving their forts. Even in death takes slightly more damage on theirs. But good defense either side. Uh, Superstars, by the way, Malthiel did not take Touch of Death at level seven. Instead, getting Cold Hand, where Soul Rip Applies a slow. Arthas. Yeah, yes. and they have the Lunara pairing. I've always viewed it as like uh, when he first came out and just the minute I saw his level sevens, I was like, you can either go AOE anti healing Arthas or I can be actual Arthas. That's a, I don't know. For some reason, that was it. His level sevens to me. It was just like healing reduction or you're just going to be the AOE slow. I... So we'll be able to pair oh, it with man. unfair advantage of Lunara later on, but also into a Malfurion where you're not going to be reducing the big burst heals. It's yeah. more the heals over time with a lot of heals available. It makes more sense to me. Yeah, I, I, it does make a bit more sense. I actually, I haven't gotten to totally do the numbers or look into it a little bit more, but once Mouth L became relevant, I did begin to go like, how much value is there behind like moving into a trank and trying to stop his healing, even with the healing reduction, right? Because, I mean, it will lose a lot, but just stalling out over time with Mouth Ale being a pressure if you can't find a way to kill him. I'm not sold on it yet, mainly because New Mouth is so utility-oriented. You need the mana reduction from Twilight Dream beyond just the fact that Twilight Dream's pretty dope. Uh, so <laughs> it's one of those things that I've been trying to kind of theorycraft around with New Mouth Ale, but I'm, I haven't come up with a solution to it yet. Just it is going to be a very difficult thing to be able to deal with here. And what circumstances do you, what supports are you like, 100% I have to yes, remove? Yes, definitely. Which ones do I not have to remove it to? Because I, I do see a day, especially if we see any adjustments to Tranquility, where it's like, oh, if they don't take this, I am going to take my AoE supporting to stop Tormented Souls from being such a terrifying road. Well, Tormented Souls was still the pickup. 
Storm Earth Fire for Chen. Still no wandering kegs yet. And Nidus Network. But again, no forts down by the time Nidus Network was achieved. So we'll see how Even and Death is able to do that. They definitely don't want to get behind structurally, because that's when it really starts to hurt having that Zagara pick with that Nidus Network. Yeah, they just can't let that be a thing. Nice knock up there. Battery stunned out, interrupted. Nice follow up by Kona. But not enough burst damage there coming out from the Lunara. I don't believe Hosi threw down a single leaping strike during that CC exchange. Definitely could have been a kill there if they had committed, but again, another split focus moment here coming out from Superstars, trying to find themselves on these new roles. Superstars are still willing to play it safely, knowing that they have both of the beacons for a long period of time. There's Twilight Dream from Hal. He's walking away. Horrify goes down with the cocoon, but it doesn't land on anybody. The cocoon. Hosty. I couldn't have made out of Cocoon in time, just barely. Nice heals there for my opponent, make sure everybody stays alive, but the rebuttal damage is there. Blow for blow in bottom lane. Not what I expected to see in that exchange, but it, nice fight back here from Superstars after looking like they were gonna fall down. Even still, even in death being, uh, well, losing Gul'dan here is very rough, but making even in death feel like they had to fight that there, while the entire time Superstars had the beacon now, there is a very healthy Zerg Rush pushing here in the top lane and still 16 seconds until Gul'dan has spawned. Gul'dan is such a good hero to be able to defend versus the Zerg Rush, so not having him at the onset of this is rough. Yeah, it is devastating here. Superstars should be able to get a lot with that 100-0. The fact that Superstars is not committing a 5-man up on the top is honestly a bit concerning. Because now, even in death, once they do get the Gul'dan up here, which he's going to be joining in the next couple of seconds, we find ourselves at the same conundrum we did on Sky Temple, pushing at a key front wall and not necessarily being prepared to be able to take the fight. 16 tier wasn't a big of enough advantage. Will 13 tier be? Look at Ariel's showing on bottom. They know that there's no support. His, Lutano's just in trouble. Threw out Horrify again, and the Twilight Dream was used, but Lutano's just draining life for his life. Stray gets on him in the back line, and now Yoda, too, with Tormented Souls, hoping that he can put on the damage for another pick for the team. Yeah, not moving past the Zerg Rush on top of that, too, only increased the damage taken there for even in death on taking the fight. A nice punishment here for Superstars. After winning that, they should be able to pick up a minimum of this front wall, dabble, dance around, and question they want more, but they're not even going to risk it. They're going to back out, and I'd like to see them at least open up them or focus on ma macro, getting them Merc camps right now because this is something we see a lot. If a team doesn't push with the actual Zerg Rush because of how slow it is and takes to be able to clean up, then you got to make it worth it. Immediately paint the map blue. We got the setup with uh, Ariel Lunara, it looked like, but instead going to just clear out the waves and then move back to their safe camp instead of trying to steal away a camp and potentially put themselves in a bad positioning for even in death to capitalize on. They got the Knights. I would have, like, talking about that pressure, I would have liked to see it onto the fort or anything. It's just that even in death got a free clear. They didn't dance around, throw out any spells to question if they could get another pick. They just kind of walked away and was like, again, you know, am I, I have a slight upper hand. Am I going to risk anything? And if you don't, then always make it with a high amount of intent, right? You're like, oh, well, we aren't going to fight this. We aren't going to risk this. But guess what? The minute this drops, we've got three Merc camps coming your way. We're going to pressure out. We need to see that here from Superstars if they're going to be able to secure this game. Because, again, last game. Even in death came back. The minute that they failed the pressure properly, even in death got a comeback that debatably never should have happened. In this instance, though, even in death are all grouped together. Uh, superstars baited out, at least were able to find where even in death were in the bottom lane while simultaneously pushing up in the top. Now Zagara has to go up and deal with that. So what do superstars do in this time? They really want to get 16 before taking a fight, ideally, so that they do have that upper hand. There's no window that you can do that unless you all in on bottom four, and you can only do that at six or 15 and three quarters. So like this is too early, for instance. So even in death can take this fight and it won't be the 16 break, but half a second later it might. Or if I had Twilight Dream follow-up was perfect to make sure that Muradin went down, wasn't able to get into uh, Dwarf Toss or even uh, Avatar to get the health necessary to stay alive until his team could rotate, even in death, catch Muradin at the perfect timing right before Superstars got 16. They keep their Ford alive even. 
I mean, it was about everything they could have hoped for at that point in time, because now they do have a rather long window that they should not have even, or should not have happened if they did not get that punishment there. So they need to make it worth it here. The transition outwards, everybody left the bottom altar, which should mean a free transition over on the side of Superstars. Luckily, getting the pick on the Murda means less backdooring in this kind of downtime to these shrines. I like Battery diving over top. Trying to stall out as long as he can here. As they've managed to obtain at least 38%. But again, without the 16 talents here, now that Superstars actually has this time, it's most likely even in death will be the ones backing out. Along with this cold hand slows at 7. Now, once again, taking the cooldown reduction for Soul Rift, Soul Collector, as well as increased range. And Yoda's going to dive in. He has Tormented Souls on the back line of Hao and Lutano, abusing the fact that those cooldowns were used earlier on. But Horrify is back up, and Even in Death are at their fort. Yeah, that initiation definitely left something to be desired here. Even in Death should find a way to be able to capitalize on top of that. Zagara looking to come down through her Nidus. Battery stuck in the corner. Iacona shoves him right against the wall with a nice detainment strike. And that is now a kill here for Superstars. They quickly move on to bait, or on to boss. Nobody rotating around to get the top beacon yet. Just all focus on that boss, knowing that they don't want to spin out too much. They did take out one person, but it was a new Barak. Frozen X checks this I mean, out. Or they even can Adepta stop can do this. this. Yeah, they, they have Horrify. Can. They have Cocoon too, but it's, of course, dead, so never mind that. <laughs> right, it's all about the Horrify now. That's the biggest boss tool here. Nice zoning coming up from Urho. The Horrify is not even going to be a thing as they just full retreat on out. Eventually, Yoda moves in. And the slows, the splintered spear, Hosty wailing away there with her javelin. That is a javelin, huh? She throws an actual javelin. Is it a javelin or just a spear? What's the difference between the two, actually? Uh, why do we do this to ourselves? I actually don't know. <laughs> I make the mistake every time where it'll be like flail mace thing with Johanna, but now that I'm looking at it, I don't actually know what she throws. And how do they replenish after she throws the first? She's got a secret quiver. Where does she hide it? <laughs> I, had to, I had to figure that one out. Sylph, Sylph has a quiver that she has too, but she pulls hers out of like death area. You know, like she mind oh, controls. Oh, an alternate dimension. Nailed it. Boss dealt with Zerg here. 50% to 100. Keeps her still alive for even in death. And they've got 16 now. They do. So now, superstars. This is... Oh, man. They're going to push out here. Zerg Rush is going to move in. It's just this is the exact same thing we saw into the last game. They have the objective. Gul'dan is going to weaken, weaken, weaken. But do we see Even in Death actually getting the pick that they need? Look at Hosi. That was that two combo. auto attacks away. So close to going down, and Hosi is the battery for Ariel. That is not what they want to happen, but now Homicidal is being dove upon. It turns around. Oh, Ooh. my Ooh. dream! How just slayed with that Twilight dream. Sadly, nobody got killed, but that was real impactful. The fact that that thing just, I mean, let's be honest here. If that Twilight dream did not go off right like that, Superstar is just four-man wipe. That's game. Yeah, it was Twilight Dream and Counter-Strike, too, just blasting through Superstars so well. Even in death, somehow defend their keep again. So what are they, like, this is now the moment, you know, that they have to get something. You can see them grasping up towards top keep. I don't know if I like this over bottom. More. I get the idea of moving into the keep and the relevance of getting a keep and the impact that's going to have, but it's also one of those kind of how long am I going to get chased and when you are against a Chen and a Malthale, those are two factors that you definitely need to consider. But also the lack of, you know, tormented souls. I think that's one thing I want to see more of, especially in NA now that Mouth is a thing, um, is much like old school Malfurion. When you saw the Trank, you were like disengage and then we re-engage. It feels like Malthael is that impactful to where it's just kind of like wait for the Torment and Souls like when Yoda engaged on bottom four and then be like wait, 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 okay, now we all in. Especially once uh, next week comes in and you have that increased cooldown of Tormented Souls. Yeah. That's going to be even more a thing. 
The cocoon reveal. Can they get the kill? The healing reduction is there. Knock up. Four or five. Malthio, goodbye. And that's three. Two heroics only use on the side of even in death. And now they find themselves with the keep. Are they doing this? There's no way. I've said that before, but... I mean, there's actually just no way. They re they agree. They're going to back out there. It's just... I, I was scared for a moment, but when you look at the damage that they have on that side, it's like... Zag is pretty good at it, but she's very susceptible. Alarak is terrible uh, because he's just looking for a pick. And a new Brack doesn't necessarily stand out in that area. A lot of it would just have to be keep Zag and Gul'dan alive. And if you're banking on that one in the later stages of the game with only a mouth, it's a little too hard. But even death, they waited out. And we are now going to find ourselves Superstar still with an experience advantage. But even in death, got the first key. They did. That makes a huge difference when you look at the next beacon phase activating in 12 seconds. Boss being checked by the Wisp and the rest of Superstars. Mercenary camp is going to force positioning of Malthale at least. Superstars heads up to the top to make sure they're not too separated from him. They hold that beacon. Even in death, take the bottom. Setting up a party bush. They are. This is exactly what they need to do to try and make sure. It's not that you would necessarily have to gank superstars, but you have to be somewhere they don't expect you to be. Oh, battery missing that E. Now look at Urho. No hesitation. He goes in. He's going to start the fight. How has got pressure. Look at that damage from Posey, though. The boss is aggroed. How is just trying to scoot his way out and out of there. <laughs> He's like, no, I do not want this boss. It turns on to Sarei. That was two pretty big cooldowns used. Even in death, able to force that. They get back out. They heal up versus the Luminara. They're going to re-engage. This is it. They don't have 20. No, but neither do Superstars. They go in. Look at that damage coming out from Malthale there. He falls low. Sray tries to continue leaping strike, Ooh. bouncing on in. That is Hosty with one. This is going to be a full team white gilly. And I think this is the end here for even in death. That was just way too good of a fight. Hosty. I feel like minimum 5,000 to 10,000 damage in that team fight alone just by him. That was insane. You set that up, the double poisons, and that is exactly what happened. And Superstars, the minute they got the one kill, instantly hit 20. And now they head to the core to close out this series. Superstars jump on the core before the keep is down. I actually feel like I'm getting trolled. Here we go. If Yoda gets splash damage auto attacked hard enough that he ends up dying. Stray, tread lightly there, man. That's going to be it. But shout out to Even in Death. Oh, yeah. Not only getting the first win here at HTC North America, but every one of those games was actually pretty close. I mean, minus maybe a, a slip up here and there, they showed that they know what they need to do to be able to come back in certain games, even at the very end there. They took the one fight that they had to take. I mean, granted, it was a 5-0 wipe, so you go, oh, Superstars, like, it really feels like Superstars ruined that game, but it was really, you lost only one fight, and then you end up dropping it. I mean, they've got to feel good about their performance today. Definitely. They've made a lot of strides. Uh, they can take that performance, go back, review, and then come in next week. They'll be playing versus World 20 on Saturday, so they're going to need that experience, but hey, it's another uh, good learning experience, and Roll20 obviously is still figuring some things out. We know that they are in a slump, their post-event slump, as Glaurung said. Yeah, it is a really weird phenomenon that kind of happening there with Roll20, but Superstars does take the win here today. I feel like this is just going to be a continuous trend for them. It's just like, how much do they end up getting better uh, with the improvements that they're trying to make here as a roster, with the changes they have? Especially for, again, like players like Saray on that new role because he's been essentially only a, a warrior player. And even beyond that, I ran a unique warrior pool compared to most, you know, with the heavy emphasis on Johanna for a long while. So on more fragile heroes like that Gul'dan, you can see that it's just going to be one right click in the wrong direction, half a millimeter, and it's a nice punishment from even in death. So... I would like I, I like the changes, but I still want to see that improvement from them over time. What I will say for Superstars is that even though they did lose Goku, and we saw that immediately as a difficult moment for Superstars specifically, they've gained a lot with Yoda. Yoda is bringing in the aggression for the team. You could see it in the way he was engaging in fights. And yeah. if once they get on the same page, you know, you've got Yoda and Airho engaging at the same time, then you can see the potential there for this team. And it's exciting to see 
just how much improvement personally Yoda has gone through and what he brings to this roster. No, I, I agree with you there. You can see it in his play that he already has a more offensive mentality in some circumstances than we saw the rest of superstars having. Yeah. And though it doesn't necessarily translate over to a successful team fight in this game, again, it's a, this game has a lot of small things that it's just, you just, oh, I slightly messed that up. Suddenly the entire team fight looks terrible. But like that Dragonshire bottom flank specifically was where I was like, this was so not what superstars would have done in the past, but Yoda's growth over working with teammate and now, again, roll 20 and then coming into this roster, he definitely is making changes and helping the group. Well, let's check in with Aya Kona now. Hey, Kona, congratulations. Uh, how have you guys' adjustments been going, in your opinion, um, now that you've got your new roster? Hey, um, I think overall our adjustments have been going pretty slow. Um, obviously, it'd be nice if the would go faster, but we had a lot of roll swaps going into this. We changed up like shot calling, we changed up kind of 